I, oh yeah, I feel sorry for you because Planned Parenthood is a racist system. Margaret Sanger was a um, a Planned Parenthood. You know what? Margaret Sanger thought very little low of black people. She thought they were ignorant and they shouldn't exist and reproduce. And you know what Planned Parenthood is about? Planned Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is to sterilize black people. You want to be You cannot put down. You should be against Planned Parenthood. We shouldn't be funding any type of Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is a joke. And anyone that doesn't know their history, know your history about Margaret Sanger, the beginning of Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is the most racist organization. Know your history before you start supporting some. Population control. Ooh. This is a heavy subject. Mainly because hmm, it's a it's a dive into conspiracy now look some conspiracies are absolute fucking nonsense some conspiracies turn out to be true to be true rather and some are just interesting and it's it's an interesting theory to talk about because it is a theory now, the whole idea of population control is is popular amongst many conspiracy heads. It's been around for years, and there are many great population control conspiracies out there. But the thing is about population control is that it's one of those evil, horrible things that you think about that makes actual sense. And that is what makes it so fascinating and terrifying at the same time. Because it could, it, it could be justified many, many ways over. So what we talk about population control. Well, there are examples out there that could definitely be real examples of population control. I mean, you've had death squads in Brazil back in the day. Police were going around to the slums. Just randomly shooting people that they deem criminals. You talk about it. You know, it's a place like Rio and Sao Paulo that are sprawl, sprawling megapolises with massive overpopulation problems, mass poverty, crime, disease, you name it. And when you give the police sort of license, or they give themselves license rather, in this example, to go out there and just indiscriminately just murder people. You can sort of look at it and think, well, what's the bigger picture here? You know, criminals aren't exactly all evil. So why would you, why would you be okay with them just being randomly shot and killed in the streets? Well, because it kind of makes sense for the bigger picture. There's too many people. How do we cull these people? Let's go out and kill them. Now, one interesting recent example of what you could call population control is what's been happening in the Philippines. Uh, in the Philippines, <laughs> in the Philippines, the Philippines, um, Manila, particularly, the capital, has seen such a rampant rise in overpopulation. I mean, it went from I can't remember what the original number was, but it was below 10 million, and it just increased over 10 years or so to be about 20 million people living in Manila like one of the biggest cities in the world, population-wise. And I remember a few years ago, you know, watching an Unreported World episode when they were in Manila talking about its overpopulation problems. And you had people building makeshift houses on top of graves, like literally graveyards with houses built on top of fucking graves. There was bridges with these awkwardly hanging shacks underneath them. Basically anywhere where there might be some sort of space, not even necessarily space. We're not talking about like some unused space in a council estate. You know, if you go around certain council estates and there's these weird negative spaces where you think, well, why isn't there something there? Like, there's no room for people to play. It's just hard concrete. You know, they build a house on there, but you know, no one, but they're not just looking at spaces where they can just build stuff. They look at something, well, I could technically live on that. You know, that um, we'll just have to use the um, statue of Jesus 
on top of that grave as perhaps a nice ornament for the living room to uh, be the focal point of our new lovely shack living room. And it's been a problem in the Philippines for a long time. And obviously, the, one of the problems with overpopulation in Manila is because there's no work in the countryside. And obviously, they're strict Catholics and no one straps up. You have average households of 8 to 10 children. You know, you've definitely got an overpopulation problem. Now, what's his, his name is Duetra. Is it Duetra? Duetra? The president. The fug president, as I like to call him. I mean, Vladimir Putin is definitely the fug president, but he's definitely a fug president. He's a man who openly said, you know, if you don't like what I do, fuck you. Uh, definitely one of the first populists to come into prominence over the past few years. Now, the controversial thing in Milela, um, which isn't fully verified, but it's definitely been spoken about a lot, is their own death squads that they have out there to deal with their apparent rampant problem with uh, crystal meth addiction. And the way they're dealing with that was encouraging people and the police to openly shoot dead drug dealers and addicts in the streets. And thousands and thousands of people have just been indiscriminately murdered there. And that's a fascinating thing. Because I don't know how bad their drug problem is. I don't know how rampant, I don't know how many lives it ruins, I don't know how many murders and rapes and robberies and so forth are attributed to this drug, this drug epidemic. But when you look at it, you think, well, maybe, you know, the overpopulation problem that they're having, maybe a solution is to get rid of, you know, the ones in society who just aren't contributing enough. You know, kind of like drawing straws and thinking, well, no one's going to miss this lot because they're not really doing much for the greater good anyway. And uh, this sort of solves a problem. So if we encourage the public and militias and vigilantes and the police to just indiscriminately shoot them dead, you know, gets rid of drug addicts and also keeps the population down. There's a thought for you. Because that sounds heinous and horrific and horrible. But it does make sense. It would make sense for them. Because what else are they going to do? Reform their religious beliefs? Have a one-child system like China did? What are you going to do? Like, what are you actually going to do with that rampant problem? This is the thing. A lot of Western countries, are uh, our birth rates are declining. Whereas other countries, they're just rampantly going through the roof. This obviously leads to, um, I guess, I guess that's what's led to alt-right movements, I suppose. Well, what they call the alt-right now. I mean, it used to be called something different before they claimed that moniker off other people. But, you know, their whole thing is that the white species is under threat because it's, you know, you know, we're just, we're just not having as many babies anymore because we don't need to. Because uh, obviously the Western world is predominantly white and obviously, you know, we've reached a stage of where we've eradicated a lot of disease and a lot of poverty and, you know, back in the day you, you had to have lots of kids. It was just a numbers game because a hell of a lot of them would die and someone's got to push the fucking plow. But we don't have those needs anymore. Whereas other nations who are developing or third world do have those needs. Do you know what I'm saying? And you have these these white identitarians who, you know, want to preserve the white race. And it, there's kind of nothing wrong with wanting to preserve your race. I think any race would agree that it's, it's fine to preserve your race, to want to preserve it. You know, it's just because it's white, it's sort of all wrong. It's just the way you go about it, I suppose. Um. So we don't have... Pro as big a problem with population control as in, in the Western world. Not just whiteies, but in the Western world in general. But, obviously, you know, in recent events you've had all the climate change protests. And one of the biggest causes of climate change 
is overpopulation. It's as simple as that. And I found it fascinating to see two women, um, I think they're on this morning or something like that, talking about how they were sort of making a stand or making a, you know, making a statement, protesting climate change by not having children because um, they were too afraid of their future when inadvertently they were actually helping the cause by not having children because that is one of the biggest causes so actually by them not having children is is doing is doing the world a greater good so their enforced population control um, is beneficial now this is what leads us into even darker and more fucked up territory when it comes to population control and a lot of the conspiracy theories that you'll see out there this is what they're based on I've seen you know obviously as being a a fan of hip hop music for a long time constantly seen examples of people's conspiracy theories about population control and some of the most fascinating theories I've seen is uh, in uh, badly made YouTube conspiracy videos some of those I fucking love them I love them one great example is um, the gay hip hop agenda now there's one creator on YouTube and forgive me I I, I don't remember his uh, his handle but he is um, at last count I think it's a he I'm pretty sure it's a he last time I checked he'd made 90 plus videos on this subject matter of the gay hip hop agenda and these videos are long and uh, they're hilarious just in how many well how many examples and how much evidence he puts forward of um, and all of these these um, examples of and uh, pieces of evidence uh, um, but, uh, well, the best way to describe them is reaching uh, for sure I mean there's ones of you know baby you know no, Birdman, CEO Cash Money, kissing little Wayne on the lips. Uh, there's one hilarious one of someone freestyling and Beanie Seagull, and if they've put, dubbed over, you know, they haven't got the freestyle on it, so there's no context to it, but they play this sinister music, and Beanie Seagull is there sort of next to this guy freestyling, sort of making these kissy lips at him, like, mm, and it is just fucking hilarious. But the whole point of the gay hip hop agenda is that hip hop has been infiltrated by people who want to see the black race eradicated. So their theory is, is the way you eradicate the black race is by turning them all gay, obviously. Because gay people don't have children. Even though gay people can have children, they, they still have sperm and stuff. And you know, a lot of gay people have a very kind female surrogate friend who you know, or get a surrogate or adopt, you know, but, but leaving that aside, you know, leave that aside. If men are just completely disgusted by a vagina and don't want nothing to do with it, um, then obviously in turn, um, they will wipe out the entire race. Um, but there's only a gay hip hop agenda, as far as I can say, as in homosexual males. Um, apparently, I haven't seen any examples uh, about them trying to turn all females into um, uh, lesbians. I haven't seen any examples of that. Uh, no, sorry. A lot of the examples they use as well as like Young Fug. So he's a um, definite favorite target. We'll see because, you know, he embraces androgyny in a way that's never been seen in that music genre before. Um, so, you know, they think he's definitely part of the agenda to stop the black man from procreating. There's a lot of... Um, Conspiracy theories to do with, uh, do with, you know, the eradication of certain races, but this one, sticking with this, the whole homosexual propaganda thing, is fascinating, because there is a huge belief behind it, and there's a lot of people who believe it. Even Dave Chappelle, so much, has, you know, talked about the, the, the whole thing of the black man in a dress. You can see the you know the interview he does with Oprah Winfrey, and he says you know I I I like conspiracy you know I'm into conspiracy theories, you know, my house certain ones, and he's like why is there always a black man in a dress? And he you know he talks about this story where he was 
making Blue Streak with Martin Lawrence. And he says, suddenly out of the blue, they change the script and saying, you know, Dave, you should put this dress on. You're going you're gonna to be in drag to, like, escape a situation or whatever it is. And he's like, you yeah, know, I don't, he's like, no, nah, I don't think it'd be funny. And apparently they keep pressuring him, keep sending different people in to tell him about wearing this dress, put on this dress. And eventually, eventually, you know, situation was dealt with and Dave Chappelle never wore a dress because he said he didn't want to be another black man wearing a dress and he's like why was it and he you know this is at a time when Dave Chappelle was going through you know somewhat of an existential crisis I guess you could say you know the, the giddy heights of the Chappelle show and when he walked out on 50 million dollars and everyone said he'd gone crazy but you know he was seeing things in Hollywood that he thought were sick he thought there was a sickness there, basically. But even, you know, someone who's was well balanced, I'd say Dave Chappelle's a well balanced individual from just through, you know, watching interviews with him and just his comedy and everything you'd say, you know, he's not a loon bag. But even Dave Chappelle thinks, well, what is this about putting men in dresses? And of course, there was interview, great interview with <laughs> on Flat TV. With uh, little Boosie, who's now known as Boosie Badass, um, talking about, you know, how he felt there was a lot of gay agendas being pushed on kids in cartoons, and he says, you know, I don't have any problem with the homosexuals and blah blah blah. He said, but this is kids. Why are they pushing it on kids? They don't need to know about this sort of thing. It starts to get you thinking. Now, obviously, because of the modern age and technology. Um, and advancements in science and so forth. The whole idea that um, making people gay is not really going to halt population. It might hold it a bit back, but um, obviously because of surrogacy and advancements in science and adoptions and obviously and obviously the changes in the law for homosexual couples to be able to have children of their own, you know. Um, doesn't really put it at a dead end. But I guess it would make it a bit more difficult. Maybe slow it down a bit. Possibly. Like I said, we're just theorising here. We're not going all out and saying this is definitely what's happening. Because I don't, I, don't, I, I don't know. I can 100% say yes or no. That's what makes it so fascinating. Because you think about it, there's definitely a push. There's definitely like um, an attack on heterosexuality and a push for the embracement of homosexuality. That could be argued. And you could argue that maybe this is all part of a bigger picture that would be better if more people were gay and more people choosing not to procreate because of that reason <laughs> you could argue that and why could you argue that because of what you see around you yes but more so because it makes sense when it makes sense it could be possible and that's what makes it fucking crazy i'm like oh i love thinking about this shit this is why i'm doing this because it's interesting do you think you know More, more homosexuals, less family units, like traditional family units, less people having children, or less people with the desire to have children. Maybe, maybe they have it right. I don't think it's um, a conspiracy to wipe out the black population because it's been pushed in all sorts of directions. But you know, you get some great conspiracy theorists in the black community especially the hip hop and like wow, and old crazy Jamaicans fantastic fantastic most entertaining conversations you'll ever fucking have but you could see it you'd be like oh because it does make sense because it is a problem look some of the great minds of our time from Bill Gates to fucking Elon Musk have all you know talked about how overpopulation is a huge problem that we are facing and how exactly do we combat it because the thing is the more advanced we get scientifically 
technologically wise. You know, we eradicate a lot of diseases. Uh, so that we have no big plagues coming in to wipe us out. And we haven't had a massive war for a very long time. And think how many people were killed in the Second World War. Ten million men, majority men, died in World War Two, and that's just in, from the UK. Twenty-five million Russians dead in the Second World War. Devastated. So much so that we had a lack of workers, and therefore we had, you know, yeah, the great, the great, uh, the great immigration of like of the sixties. Everyone from Jamaica and <clears throat> and other Caribbean countries and from India came over to basically rebuild the workforce and that's why we have the um, cultural landscape we have today is because you know some of you might be like you know some some of you might be like second third fourth generation Caribbeans and, and the reason you might be in the UK now is because shit loads of people died <laughs> <laughs> years ago <laughs> it's crazy isn't it when you think about it it's like that's why people are encouraged to come over because we were fucked we were absolutely fucked it was a win win situation you know you get to have your that generation of people got to like have a new opportunity and we got to rebuild the country you know it was a give and take thing but you know doesn't seem likely that we'll have another massive war because of just how things have changed since then. But then again, further we go on, nothing really changes anyway, the way you look at it. So maybe, maybe we are due another fucking massive war. And maybe it won't be such a bad thing because maybe we do need to uh, slow it down a bit. But there's not many answers to it because you can't prohibit people from having children. You know, that's wrong. What can you do? What can you do? Then it leads me to other things to think about. All those weird, wacky diseases. It seemed like for a long period of time that every year there was a new disease on the horizon. A new threat. And obviously I've always attributed it to the, the fear machine. <clears throat> and the fear machine... A lot of people think the fear machine is produced by governments, but really the fear machine is kind of produced by media outlets. And why? Well, to sell newspapers. Um, to have a nice on-running story. Because every day you can just use, you know, a different version of the same fucking headline. People still buy the paper. Like bird flu, swine flu, SARS. Look at all this shit we've had. Every year it was something new. SARS is coming. Bird flu's coming. Swine flu's here. You know, that'd be Monday. Swine flu's swine flu coming. Tuesday. Swine flu's still on the way. Wednesday. Swine flu's almost here. Thursday. Swine flu's definitely going to be here. Friday. This is how many people are going to die from swine flu. Saturday. Oh, one case of swine flu. Sunday. Two cases of swine flu. Monday. Four cases of swine flu. And then by the next Friday. Oh, no more swine flu. We found something else to talk about that isn't so boring. You know, that's the fear machine. The fear machine is media created. Some people think it's like the government pushing it. And maybe, you know, maybe it kind of walks hand in hand. Maybe the government and the media are complicit with each other. Who knows? Who knows? Like I said, we're just theorizing about crazy stuff right now. And it's fun. This is fun. Okay? But anyway. You think about all those diseases that just kept coming out of nowhere. It's like, well, where did they start? And why do they keep happening? What's that all about? And some people might think, oh, they sort of make up these diseases to distract us from something else that might be going on, which is very possible. Or they just ramped up the notion of these diseases to, um, you know, get us to buy newspapers and fear is intoxicating. Or are they manufacturing these diseases for population control? Are you scared? Are you scared? You fucking should be. So there's a there's a point there. Because there's another theory. One perpetuated by 
of all people, Dr. Umar Johnson, and others of his ilk. Of his ilk. If you don't know who Dr. Umar Johnson is, some people dispute that he's not even a doctor. Um, he is a scholar, uh, a black American scholar who preaches the um, virtues of pan-Africanism. Look it up, I'm not going to explain it. Um, but you know, he's a proud black American who um, is a bit dubious. The thing is, he's one of those people where like, sometimes he says some things and I'm like, yo, that totally makes sense, I'm totally down with that. Yeah, definitely, I can see where he's coming from. And then he'll say some really fucking crazy shit. One of which is where AIDS comes from. Now, I bring it back to Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle does his bit about, you know, the AIDS monkey theory. That someone had sex with a monkey. And that's what started the HIV epidemic. Others have theorized that perhaps it was from eating contaminated monkey meat in Benin, I believe. No, not Benin. Yeah, Benin. Here's Benin. Yeah, Benin. Or Gabon. It's Benin or Gabon. One of those. Sorry, either of you countries that it wasn't. Sorry. But one of you's the AIDS monkey country. Anyway, they think that someone ate the AIDS monkey. But whatever it was. Dogs Umar Johnson says that AIDS and Ebola, Ebola is another one, um, were created in a CIA laboratory in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, and uh, under the orders of Jimmy Carter, I believe. And the uh, whole idea is that it was a tool, a weapon, a biological, biological warfare to eradicate the black man off the face of the earth. Again, another great black community conspiracy theory. Now, of course, you could argue that also... Um, because AIDS was predominantly uh, also in the gay community, uh, the reasons why, why was AIDS more in the predominantly in the gay community? Well, from my understanding is that because um, of anal sex. Uh, basically, to get HIV is quite hard, believe it or not. It needs quite a, a lot of blood transference. And if, if you're having unprotected sex in the anal cavity, um, it's very delicate, you know, because it's not built for it. As far as far, you know, it's just not. Um, nature dictates that, you know, the vagina can take that sort of pounding, whereas your bum hole, it, it, it cannot. And uh, blood will be transferred. And that's why, you know, it's based, it's basically very simple science. That's why there's more um, more transference of AIDS in the, uh, in the gay community. Why was there sort of thought to be more in the black community? I don't know, probably because... They don't like condoms as much. But then what about the Catholics? Oh, probably Catholic blacks. I don't know. I'm digressing. Anyway, the point is that you could say, well, if AIDS was manufactured in this laboratory in Fort Lauderdale, well, what a perfect way for population control. Especially if you don't like gays. But then aren't gays serving the population control ideal that I'm talking about? But you think about it. If the government has a think tank, a secret think tank, says, look, population is rampant. We've got problems. We don't want a war. Wars are expensive. Like, little pocket wars are expensive enough, but a big global war, well, it almost bankrupted, bankrupted it last time that happened. So we can't have that to reduce the population. But, you know, a lot of, but since the sexual revolution, a lot of people are going out there and just fucking and fucking and fucking and not being very responsible. So, it's on them. It's their fault. I mean, they're asking for it. Let's give them AIDS. What's AIDS? I don't know. Go create it in your fucking laboratory, my son. Again, it kind of makes sense that they would create a disease that gets spread through sexual intercourse because they'd be like at that time when it was created they'd be like wow you know we don't like the homosexuals they're deviants so we'll get rid of them um, and that'll be fine and then it will spread on to other people and uh, eventually you know it will sort of you know keep the population down because we're all going to die of AIDS 
then they will manufacture some other diseases. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. See, this is crazy talk. This is absolute crazy talk. But the thing is, it's possible. It's kind of possible when you think about it. Because, well, what else are you going to do? You know, running around with your death squads and shit. It's going to raise a few eyebrows and you know, a lot of questions are going to be asked. But if there's some disease that happens that has a stigma around it, uh, maybe not so now, but definitely did for a long time. People are constantly getting HIV. And then it's kind of like, well, you were warned that you, you know, should, shouldn't have unprotected sex and shouldn't have anal sex and shouldn't be gay and whatever it is. And obviously, and then there's the whole drug abuse thing, well, you shouldn't be shooting up heroin, you definitely shouldn't be sharing needles, it's your own fault, you know, people are going to be like, well, uh, some people are like, well, it's your own fault, isn't it, but leaving that lifestyle, yeah, living that lifestyle, that's what you're dead, and it can just bubble along and reduces the population, but the thing is, HIV isn't that rampant, well, not in the western world, but it could be true. That's the thing, it could be true. Why? Because it makes sense. It just makes sense. you got your evil think tank. How are we going to sort this problem out? I don't know. Let's create some fucking wacky disease. Okay, let's do that. All right, brilliant. Like cancer. When did cancer start? I'm not even going to look it up when the first examples of cancer came about. You know, where, where's the example of you know, people don't have cancer during the time of Richard the Third. You know, how many Romans died of cancer? You know, you know, how many of Alexander the Great's army died of cancer? Where did cancer come from? Why is there so many different types of cancer? Why is there loads of fucking cancer? Why is cancer the biggest fucking killer out there? Why is cancer killing everything? Cancer, cancer, cancer. But then cancer gives you at different stages of life. Because what you want is to sterilize. But then maybe that was the original idea. Maybe they created cancer. Thinking, oh, it will kill babies. Or kill people before they have babies. But then people of all sorts of ages get cancer. But mainly older. So what you want to do is stop it before people are born. Hmm. So maybe the cancer theory was washed out the window. Maybe cancer was. Maybe they created. Maybe they created fucking cancer. And we're like, right, this is the one. We got loads of. T what? What have you got? We got cancer of everything. Really? Yeah. Literally, we got every type of cancer you want. What do you want? Eyeball cancer, ear cancer, nutsack cancer, titty cancer. We got all of them. Really? Bumhole cancer, especially bumhole cancer. We got all of them. We got so much cancer. We got cancer of the fucking blood. Blood. Really? Yeah. What do you want? I don't know. Just release all of it. See what happens. How many people is going to kill? I don't know. One in three? One in three? Brilliant. That gets us on target by 2026. Yeah. Maybe they did that. Maybe they fucking did that. Who are they? We don't know. Is it the they that DJ Khaled speaks of? It might be. I don't know. Possible. They might have invented cancer. Because where did cancer come about? Why is there so much fucking cancer? There's cancer everywhere. Fucking cancer, cancer, cancer. Way too much cancer. No cure for cancer. Loads of cancer research. All types of fucking cancer. Cancer's fucking crazy. But anyway. They haven't solved that. Did they create cancer? Was that in that laboratory in Fort Lauderdale where they created AIDS and Ebola? We don't know. We don't know. But it happened. Another example that you could delve into. This is a fascinating thing. Great book. Quite well, an interesting book by Malcolm Gladwell called The Tipping Point. Um, which basically examines different trends, all kinds of different trends from like uh, the popularity of hush puppy shoes in New York in the 90s 
to um, uh, New York's rampant murder rate decline. The decline of New York's rampant murder rate. Now, before I go into this bit, I just want to say, you know, I know we're just theorizing and being a bit silly at times. But also, that um, it's important to note that in, I think it's in social sciences, uh, if there's two trends or two things occurring, doesn't necessarily mean they correlate, that, they, that one is responsible for the other, if you know what I'm saying. Um, as a silly example, that is relevant, that one I just thought of. Um, if you, you know, have an allotment and you start planting cantaloupes, and from the day you start planting your cantaloupes, local cats start dying of seizures, doesn't mean that your cantaloupe patch is responsible for those cat seizures. It could be just very coincidental. You would need to find a lot of, well, a lot more evidence that, you know, link the two in order to come up with that theory. And unfortunately, in this day and age, there's a hell of a lot of theories and which are presented as facts, as correlations of things happening that um, don't have enough evidence to support the fact. Now, so now we've got that bit out of the way, I hope you understand. In the tipping point is something very interesting. So obviously New York in the, you know, from the late 70s to the early 90s was fucking one of the murder capitals of the world. You were talking at one point, I think it was 11,000 murders a year. I'm pretty sure that is the right number. Like insane, an insane number of murders. Because those kind of figures you'd only attribute these days to, you know, places like Rio or Cape Town or Johannesburg or Caracas, that sort of murder rate. This is New York, you know, the richest country on planet Earth. You have that higher murder rate. Now, in the book, you know, it goes through people's theories of why it suddenly declined, and it really rapidly declined in the 90s. And obviously, we're at a state now where London has a higher murder rate than New York. Um, but I think that's people say that's because London's going crazy. I say well, it's more because New York has gotten safer and safer and safer, you know, progressively over the years. Um, I say it's it's more of a instead of negatively looking at London, it's more of a positive shout out to what New York's done. But you know they had theories of you know the mayor and um, the police police chief introduced. Um, different things to you know create a better urban environment, which included um, making sure that simple stuff like um, subway trains were not graffitied. You know they clamped down on people going into the the yard where they keep the trains and graffitiing the trains. They stopped that from happening. They cleaned up the trains. And they created a um, just a cleaner, better environment that looked better. Um, because there is um, this thing that when you live in a, a nicer, cleaner environment and everything's not shit and fucked up and run down, you have a better mindset, a better perception, um, and therefore it sort of reduces you know, the chances of horrible things happening, like rampant crime, like murder and shit. And you know, there's many different examples they give of, of reasons why um, the crime rate declined, of all these different laws they passed. I think some of them were stop and search laws, um, uh, you know, clean up the underground, uh, more police presence, cleaning up, cleaning up towns and city centres and blah 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 blah. But Malcolm Gladwell presents something very interesting. Is that there's a correlation between the introduction of Planned Parenthood in New York State when they made it legal for abortion and the decline of crime. And basically, to break it down into simpler terms, because there's a fair few pages is how he explains it, but basically, you know, the theory is, is that there was more unwanted children in New York than there should have been. Because people didn't have a choice. There was no pro-choice. It was just pro-life. So everyone had to have a baby, and you know, you talk about backstreet abortion shit going on, if you wanted to abort. So there's more unwanted children, so therefore you had more children growing up in poverty and growing up without, you know, without real love. You know, they were a bane on their mother's existence and with a, you 
you know, absent fathers and so forth. And this is a reason, you know, it's the psychology behind why people go into that kind of lifestyle and end up murdering people over stupid shit and blah, 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 blah. And there's a correlation between when Planned Parenthood came in and, you know, when abortion was legalized and the decline of crime, there was less babies, less unwanted babies, and therefore less unhappy children growing up into angry young men. You know, majority of my men, come on, and going out and committing these crimes. And these, and he presents a very good, a very good argument, a very good case. And there is a correlation between the two. And you think about that. Abortion. Population control. And a good kind of population control in that instance, because they were controlling the population of basically wrongins in everyone's eyes. Murderers, rapists, criminals, you know, by killing them before they even came out of the fucking womb. And I've always found that really fascinating. I remember when Donald Trump came into power, and I was indifferent about the whole fucking thing, and blah, 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 I ain't gonna end all that crap. Everyone's heard too much about that. But I remember all the protests that happened in New York, and I watched some videos on it. Oh, almost smashed my beer against the fucking side of the table, that's nice. And, you know, there's all these screeching news. Eh, fuck Donald Trump, eh. In the streets, and there's this really big black geezer. A really big geezer. He's a big geezer. And he's out there going, what are you doing? He's been naturally, you know, naturally elected. <laughs> it's like, he's legally elected. Just go home, shut the fuck up. Like, what are you doing? This is meaningless. <laughs> And he starts going on about, look at the real shit. And he starts talking about Planned Parenthood. He goes, look who championed Planned Parenthood. And I can't remember the person who it is who said, but basically saying the person who, you know, who pushed Planned Parenthood or whatever was racist. He's saying Planned Parenthood is the most racist thing invented. And then that's, that gave me one of my light bulb moments when I go, oh yeah, because I remember reading this in, turn, in Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, he actually has a point. Because there's people have presented strong evidence for this. As in Planned Parenthood was put in place to eradicate a certain element of the population. Population control. And then years later, I remember seeing something with Alex Jones talk about how many babies were aborted. How many black babies were aborted. And he put, yeah, say what you like about Alex Jones, but he... Sometimes when he says some shit, it's like, whoa, fuck. Like I said, we're in conspiracy land right now, so don't worry. Don't worry. You're safe with me. I'm not a lunatic. This is for fun. Being scared is fun. And he puts up the statistics of how many black people are murdered by police, uh, how many black people are murdered in general, and how many black people are murdered, you know, in his words, and by abortion. And the numbers are fucking staggering. Staggering numbers. And it's like, oh shit. Fuck. And you see that, and you're like, oh. So you got the tipping point thing. That big, burly, black guy in New York. And Alex Jones's presentation of facts and figures, which are legitimate. And it's like, oh my god. Is this actually population control? And have they got people out there marching in the streets, banging on about female rights, about my body, my right? Have they been conditioned into thinking that pushing this agenda is for the greater good of humanity? Well, maybe it is for the greater good of humanity because it's reducing the population which is helping the fight against climate change. Oh my God. And then when you start thinking about that, this is why people go crazy. It's like, whoa, shit, shit. Yeah, by pushing more and more abortions, we are lowering the population. We are reducing the risk. We are saving resources. And we are convincing people 
that this is that you know your body your choice is this beautiful wonderful thing about empowerment and freedom when really it might just be an agenda to kill lots of babies but it might also be for the bigger picture for the greater good of humanity and it goes from good to evil to evil to good to what the fuck I don't know what to believe anymore think about that just process that like I said we're just theorizing here but it is fascinating isn't it when you think about it like that you're like oh shit oh bollocks Ooh, that is spicy it's fucking spicy 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 So who knows? Who fucking knows? But it makes sense. It makes sense to me. Think about what went on in New York. I mean, could there have been some point where they went, mm. you know, I've heard that these unwanted children, um, you know, these... these in these impoverished areas are the ones causing most of the crime. Oh, really, you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, you know, it would cost a lot of money to revamp the education system. Yes, yes, yes. And it costs a lot of money to, you know, fucking um, do the area over and, uh, you, know, you know, pump money into the area and make it more prosperous. Yeah, that's true, that's true. And, and you know, and, 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 and we do have a problem with overpopulation and it's going to get worse and worse because of obvious reasons yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I don't know why, why don't we kill them before they're born hmm yeah. that's fucking genius how are we going to do that well you know we'll, we'll push it as being a, a really good thing you know not a shameful thing but something that should be celebrated celebrated you say yeah celebrated and um, you know and the whole angle that it, it, it it's empowering, empowering, yeah, empowering, and it's it's a good thing. And in fact, in fact, um, not having an abortion is 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 evil and oppressive towards women. Yeah, wow, that's that's uh, wow. You can sell that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could sell that. We could definitely, yeah, we can make that happen. Uh, yeah, I, I think we can do that. Really, well. Off you go to the AIDS laboratory and make it happen. Man, it could be true. God, it could be true. The one thing you sort of learn about life is that all the crazy, fucking stupid and horrible things that you thought would never happen or weren't possible because people aren't that much of a twat um, generally do happen and come out to be true. Life can never fail to disappoint. And the most undisappointing thing about life is how it fails to disappoint. Um, I know, how it always disappoints. Yeah, the consistency of life. Disappointment. <laughs> as soon as you thought everything was mundane and stale another disappointment comes along and you're like oh well at least that's something new so who knows maybe AIDS was made in a laboratory in Fort Lauderdale maybe Planned Parenthood is designed to reduce the impoverished black community maybe homosexuality has been pushed as an agenda to stop us from procreating with females as if we're going to procreate with something else like donkeys or unicorns. I don't know. Why would people come up with these conspiracy theories and believe them? Because it makes sense. It makes sense. A lot of conspiracy theories don't make sense. Really. I mean, look at Flat Earth, which is really popular. I mean, that's just insane. But the whole basis of Flat Earth is, is scriptures from the Bible. And the Bible was written thousands of years ago. And, uh, you know, when people still believed in a flat earth. And then someone, somewhere along the line, got into their head that the whole theory of a round earth 
was defying the word of the Bible, even though the Bible was written at a time when we didn't know as much. And therefore, um, therefore, if if we just reduce the human race to being just an organism that's not created in the image of a great creator like God, and therefore we ain't nothing, and therefore we can be controlled because we're just pieces of shit, and we think we're pieces of shit. That's how deep flat Earth is. It's that deep. Um, but the fact is, is that um, you know, thousands of years ago, people thought the Earth was flat. And now we know it's not. So that's why it's a silly theory, because it doesn't make sense. As if that's how we're going to control everyone is by making them not believe in the word of the Bible. Well, there's more Muslims on fucking planet Earth than there are Christians. And I don't think they're all flat earthers, as far as I know. I don't think there's anything in the Quran about the fucking earth being flat. I might be wrong about that. I don't know. Tell me. Tell me either way. So it's like, well, um... <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's quite a theory to go, well, yeah, that, that's why they've created this whole illusion of things being in space and satellites and... and um, maps and gravity and everything um, is all a big lie um, because if we don't think that what's written in the Bible is completely true then we're going to think less of ourselves and therefore we're more easily controlled it's like, don't be fucking sh- you fucking out of your fucking mind there's plenty of ways they can control you you're controlled now thinking you're free because you don't believe the earth is fucking round you're under control in many other different ways so you know that's a spasticated theory so fuck that theory Lizard people, fun, but silly. Nine Eleven being an inside job. Hmm. I don't think they'd be able to pull it off. I just um, there's too too many people would have to be involved because a secret. There's an old saying: if a secret is between two people. When there's three people, it's not a secret no more. People can't fucking shut their mouths. The amount of people that have to be involved for that to be an inside job. Someone would have spilt it by now. Or there'd be a hell of a lot of dead bodies turning up. And someone would have connected the dots. But people have just been connected dots that were actually, you know, straight lines. So no, fuck that theory. The Mandela Effect. Totally debunkable. Don't even bother with it. Project Bluebeam. Mm. What's going on at CERN? Chemtrails. All these are very silly. They're silly. Because, in the end, you know, what's the big idea, the bigger picture for a lot of these things? You kind of look at these theories and go, well, it's sort of, yeah, but, uh, you know, the end game. What's the end goal of it? It doesn't seem like it's worth all that fucking effort. But when it comes down to anything that's to do with population control, you sort of think, well, it makes sense. Because so many people say it is a problem. All kinds of people recognise it as a problem. It is a problem. It's the biggest existential threat we have. More so than climate change. Because it can, cause it's part, it, it, it's responsible for climate change. And therefore, any theory to do with population control... I will listen to, no matter how fucking crazy it sounds. Think of all the crazy shit we've just been <laughs> discussing. Discussing, well, not discussing, it's just me talking. But all the shit I've put forward. And there's plenty more. But these are some key ones. Where it's it's the one theory of pop anything to do with population control. I'm like, mmm. Yeah. Yeah, I totally know where you're coming from there. And it makes it very interesting and fascinating and terrifying. But the thing is, it makes sense. And the thing is, because you could be, you can justify it. You can justify it because it's for the greater good of humanity. It's for the bigger picture. And when it's for the bigger picture of humanity, the survival of the human race, think how many people would be on board with it, really. Think about all those people out there protesting against climate change 
How many of them would really support population control knowing that it would solve their problems? Mass population control. Imagine if they actually had a real purge. Imagine if you were given a gun, a government issued gun, and there was a state enforced murder day for population control. And you're so concerned about your children's future because of climate change. You have one day and you can go out and shoot as many fucking people as you like before you get shot yourself. You'd probably take it up because you care about the environment that much, don't you? You'd go out and murder people. Do you love the future of this planet so much that you'd endorse people being state-sponsoredly murdered? Hmm, I don't know. How down are you for your cause? How down for your cause are you, really? Ask yourself that. It's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> this is some crazy shit. But it all makes sense, because it's real. As in overpopulation is real. Something needs to be done about it, and maybe stuff has been done about it. Maybe all these things are down to big, evil, non-evil government conspiracies. Because, you know, it's evil means to justify a good outcome. You know, isn't the whole point of the hero that he uses, you know, James Bond, So always said, you know, he used evil methods for the greater good. You know, sleeping with different women, shooting and killing motherfuckers. But it was all for the greater good. That's the thing. Doing stuff for the greater good doesn't mean you have. Doesn't involve doing good things. Sometimes you've got to do some really fucking horrible things. In order to achieve the greater good. That's some scary shit. And maybe. Maybe. We'll all grow up a little more. Be some big boys and big girls. And put on our big boy and big girl pants. And walk around and, you know, when we see a toilet, we'll, we'll do our poos and wee-wees in the toilet and not in our baby pants. And we'll realise that, you know, shit, some heinous things that we do not like are perhaps for the greater good of humanity. For the, for the greater good of us all. And perhaps population control is the only answer. And therefore, if it is the only answer... And Jesus Christ, that is fucking terrifying. And therefore, what is evil? I don't know what evil is. Evil is subjective now. Oh my God, what, 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 what? Yeah. But think about it for a while. Let it spin your brain out. And uh, make you scared and hide under the bed. Why not? It's an adrenaline rush. Should be fun. Anyway, you do what you think is right. <laughs> if you ask me, seriously. I think state-enforced population control, if it is real, is a cool thing. No. No, not at all. No. Everything is by chance. A lot of things happen by chance, but it doesn't mean you orchestrate chance. It doesn't mean you push chance on people. Do you know what I'm saying? That's heinous. But what are we going to do? We don't know. Well, we need to colonise Mars, I suppose. So, I don't know. Go ask Elon Musk. I'm sure he's got some fucking better ideas than me.